All right, guys, I thought I'd do a video explaining some injection molding terms that you guys should know when talking about custom Lego accessories. I just want to get some things out of the air because a lot of there's a lot of misconceptions and wrong terminology. And since over the past eight years, I've been learning injection molding. I, you know, I know the terms I've built molds. I've built, you know, probably over 100 injection molds myself. You know, everything from designing the parts, designing the molds you know, machining them out, molding the parts, everything. So I'd like to think I know something. So without further ado, let's get into it. So this is a Ultimate Craftsman Tool sprue, as you can see. So I say Ultimate Craftsman Tools because that's the products that are on the sprue here. So this is the sprue or the runner. Now, more specifically, this center part is the sprue. These parts are the runners. So as you can see, just, you know, basically the plastic comes in from here, goes down the sprue and it's ran through the runners to the parts. Now, these little pieces here that connect the parts to the runner are called gates. So when I take my snippers here and I say, I want this pickaxe here, and I come in here and I clip the gate, that's what it's called. And so you can see there's a little clip mark right there, and that's from where the gate is. Now you can apply this to any other weapon that you might see on the market. So here's my AK-47, there's the gate. That's where the gate is, the bottom of the grip. Now, normally when I'm designing weapons and whatnot and designing molds, I like to put the gate where you don't see it. So for example, with this AK-47 here, you put it in the minifigure's hands, you don't really see it because it's on the bottom. So let's find another example. This is my MP5, um, SSD with collapsed stock. Same thing, bottom of the grip. Let's see if we can find another example. This is my M1 Grand. It's in the back of the stock. So you don't really see that because you know you hold it like this, you don't really see it. And then if you hold it like this, you're not going to see it at all. So that's the gate. So that's very important. Another thing is people call these production circles. That's not what they're called. These circles that you see on the parts. You see how there's one right there, 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 there. There's five of them on this sword. Those are called ejector pin marks. So when this sprue is in the mold, it has to be popped out of the mold and ejected. So there's a bunch of different pins. You can see there's even ejector pin marks on the runners. So this whole piece needs to get pushed out of the mold. And so you have a bunch of different pins that push it out of the mold. And um, that's why it's called um, you know, ejector pins. So you can see there on the shovel, we got three of them. On the sword, like I said, there's five. On the ax, kind of have to hit the light just right to see them. There's three of them there. On the farming hoe, we've got four. And what's really cool is on my weapons, the way I make mine, um, I'm manually pulling them out of the mold. So there's no, there's no marks at all. There's no ejector pin marks. Whereas let's say, let's grab another third party accessory here. See those circles there and there? Those are the ejector pin marks. Whereas with mine, you don't see anything. Now there's pros and cons to both. Mine, I'm manually pulling them out of the mold, which does take time, but you get a cleaner looking part. You know, same thing with my MP5. There's no ejector pin marks. Once again, there's a look at the gate there on the bottom. So those are a couple terms there. Another term is what's called flashing. So here is my Ultimate Craftsman Diamond Sword. You can see all this extra plastic here. It's pretty thin. And what's happening is when your mold is closed, it's under extreme pressure, and then you have the plastic that's entering the mold at extreme pressures. It's being injected, hence the term injection molding. And sometimes that pressure is overcame and the mold opens a little bit, and this plastic seeps into what's called the parting line or where the two molds are, you know, come together. So that's what this is. This is not good, obviously. And if we compare the two, let's compare the thicknesses. If you look at the blue one on the left, you can see it's a little bit thicker than the orange one on the right. So this would not fit into a minifigure's hands because it's too thick now, whereas this one's a good part and it would. So, you know, that's just some things to look out for. 
um, you know, very cheaply made injection molds will have flashing. You can see like that, that line there. I'm a very big, you know, proponent of quality control and I try my best to get just completely perfect parts. Obviously you will see a seam and that's called the parting line. So like on the end of that barrel, you can see that line. That's where the two molds come together. You're always going to have that little line, but sometimes it can be mismatched. You can see it there on the magazine right above my fingernail there. So these are really good parting lines. So that would be the terminology you would use. Now, another thing I hear people say all the time is like Lego will come out with like a new part. Let's say this is a new Lego piece. This is an old Lego head kit. Though people will say, oh, that's a new mold. This is not a mold. This is a part. This is a piece. This is not a mold. A mold would be, you know, 200 pounds of steel, um, a steel block that makes this. So this is not a new mold. This is a new part. Um, that's just one thing I've noticed too. And like I said, let's grab, let's grab this. This is my Mark V Halo Armor. And let's take a look at this real quick. So let's take it apart. Let's take the head off. So here's another, oh geez. <laughs> um, here's the part and we can see, if we look closely, that's where the gate is, okay? Take another look. We see the ejector pin marks. We got two of them there under the shoulders, okay? Now, let's pop out the visor, and let's take a look at this. There's the gate, the little part that was clipped. There's the ejector pin mark. Now, you can see the reason why I put that gate there is because when you put it in here, you don't see it. So, once again, you got to think ahead. Take a look in there. The ejector pin is actually using my pointer here, it's actually this bottom circle. So you, it totally blends in and you can see the gate is in the back of the helmet. So just looking at different injection molded parts, you can see these different things. I mean, you can even look at Lego bricks, for example. So here's a one by eight and the gate is right there. See that there? And then the ejector pins, you see these marks right here? Boom, 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 boom. That's where the ejector pins are to knock this out of the mold. So, I mean, this is all over. I mean, you can find this on Lego parts. You can find this on, if you took apart an old toy, um, on anything plastic, anything that's injection molded, which a lot of things are injection molded, you'll find these, you know, parting lines, you'll find the gates, you'll find ejector pin marks. So it's everywhere. I just wanted to make this video just to kind of explain a couple different terms. So I hope you guys enjoy this type of stuff. Let me know by leaving a like down below and a comment and just letting me know what you guys think. But there's a lot of things to this. And I thought the more I can educate people, the better. So, you know, we can have some deeper discussions on stuff like this. So let me know what you guys think of this in the comments down below. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe. Check out some more videos right there, there and subscribe there. And I'll see you guys in another video.